So portfolio update session. Let's have a little look at what's going on at the moment in the markets. So our concern is, first of all, just having a look at property. Um, you can see property prices here on your left. These are the average price rises in the UK. And you can see that here there was the big drop with the big uh, Great Recession and then an increase. And from about 2015, really, house prices have been slowing. And what we're seeing now is as we are in 2019, according to the BBC stats here, um, basically house prices are no longer rising. So UK economy is looking a little bit stagnant. If we look at the average house price in London, we all know that house prices are disproportionate there and we've seen a huge increase. And in fact, George Osborne's project from 2015 to 2018 to put the help to buy into London, to help people to buy in London, massively increased London house prices all the way up to £473,000 average. However, over the last couple of quarters, we've seen it falling and it's now down at 468,000 and falling. There's still obviously a big disparity, but we're seeing some similarities. So we believe the first signal of the UK economy being in a bit of a slowdown or, or even basically being flat towards recession is very, very evident. It's okay, it's not all bad news. What about the US? Well, since our dear, uh, our dear Mr. Trump took over here, we can see a massive boom in the economy and uh, the man from Saracen talked about throwing petrol on the flames of the economy and that's what he's basically done. He's uh, conducted a lot of infrastructure products, uh, projects. He's also then uh, held the Fed back as much as he can from interest rate rises and he's made a lot of tax breaks. And what that's done, that's pushed up the S&P 500, which is the US stock exchange. Now I've got two lines, three lines here to show you actually. The first line over the last five years is what you would have got if you'd put your money in the bank and had managed to get 2% a year, which is good going. You probably had to lock in to get that. So 2% a year growth is the green line over the past five years from July of 2014, when we were doing one of our masterclasses then. And you can see then the gray line, that's the S&P 500, that's a tracker of the S&P 500, and the orange line is a, a, a good American fund. So there's not much in it really. But the growth is phenomenal over the last five years. Now, I need to make this very clear. This is nowhere near a guide to the future. This is what's just happened over the last five years in the US markets. And you can see a growth of about 100% on a reasonably good American fund and about 90 odd percent on the tracker. And that's extremely strong. But what about in the UK? Well, the UK has been held back a little bit like the Far East and Asia. These trade wars that have been going on between America and other countries, that's not really hurt America that much yet, but it's, it's hurt some of the emerging markets, India, China, and so on. And you can see a real difference here. On uh, your left is the UK equity market, the FTSE 100 in grey, that's a tracker, and a comparable fund in, in orange. There's the green line, it's exactly the same, 2% a year, but it looks so different. And the reason is that the market spent a lot of time below the water. And if you'd invested back in July of 2014, you'd have spent the first two years or so really struggling along under the water. And I think it's just worth reminding ourselves of because we kind of think that right now is really bad, but actually not so long ago, we got such short memories, things were pretty bad there. And we had the Greek debt crisis going on, we had all the Eurozone potential breakup going on. We've seen here, around about sort of 2016, a big lift. And I have to say, this is probably because of the Brexit vote causing the pound to fall. And in doing that, that really helped exporters, our exporters, and they've gained uh, quite a lot from this. But nonetheless, our performance of our UK index is nowhere near as good as the US, coming in at about 30% roughly over the five years. Now that's not bad, there's still you know, five, six percent a year, so it's not to be laughed at. But what it tells me potentially is there could be a lot more kind of potential for growth here. This market has really, really, has, has potentially blown. We'll see what, what's left in it. If we have a look here at our level four portfolio, now for those of you that are new to us, we talk about risk from one to five. One being very cautious, five being very adventurous. We have five model portfolios to match that, and we have three ethical model portfolios to match that as well. Many of you are very familiar with this, forgive me. Our level four is sort of erring towards adventurous. Our level three 
is comparable in daily movement to the FTSE 100. So the level four takes a bit more risk. It gets involved in the emerging markets, Far East and so on. And here is a five year line. And again, there's that green line. That's what you would have got in the bank. And look, the end result is pleasing, about 65% over the five years. Now I deliberately ran these charts over exactly the same time as the ones I've just shown you. So you can see it didn't do as well as the US, but because it's got US in it, it's done very well. But remember, it's held back a little bit by some of the UK story, Far East Asia and so on. Nonetheless, I'm pleased. But the point again I wanted to just illustrate is it spent the first two years really struggling to get out of the blocks, didn't it? Didn't really get anywhere at all. It comes suddenly. What about the last year? And I know I've got some uh, newer potential clients today looking at us thinking, oh golly, is this really worth bothering with? <laughs> <laughs> this is what we've been up against the past year. This is our level three taken from Financial Express. All these figures are from Financial Express. In no way are they guarantees to the future, but it gives you a bit of a picture. And you can see here the red line, that's our level three model portfolio. And the green line, that's the FTSE 100 tracker. And here, the pleasing news is that our level three managed to not fall quite as far. So that's okay. But it's not very exciting, is it? It spends half the time underneath the water. So in other words, it doesn't even come in at where it was. We got in on the year, the FTSE 100 grew by a whopping half a percent, roughly. These figures are at June the 28th. So they're a little bit behind. Half a percent on the year. And the, the level three portfolio came in at around about 3% over the year. So we're quite pleased with that. That's exciting, 3%. But it's been a tough year. We've also had to be incredibly proactive this year, as many of you know. We quarterly are always reviewing these portfolios. And two out of the four quarters, we've had to make some big adjustments just to try and keep the portfolio going in the right direction. So we're pleased with our results against the FTSE, but it's not been the most exciting of years. Now, you would be forgiven for thinking, well, in that case, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll wait it out. <laughs> I'll come out the market or I won't go in at all and I'll wait till it looks a bit better. And this is human nature. However, you would actually miss out considerably. And I'm going to show you why. This slide I took recently, I've called it time in the market, not timing the market. And some of you will know my saying on this, but I believe you've got to be in it to win it. And effectively, this is why. This study was, cr was created by um, an American group called the Investment Strategy Group, and they ran an analysis over 24 years, which is nice. We get a bit of data with 20 years. We can really pull the averages together. And they asked the question, how much average return do I get if I've invested into the S&P 500, which is the American equivalent of the FTSE 100, really? So I've got my money in there. How much annualized return would I have got over 20 years? Bearing in mind this is the past, it's no guide to the future, but it gives us a really good feel and a comparison. You'd have had about 7.68% annual return. Now, that, of course, we know that that isn't 77777. We know that it's all over the place, but from end to end, the compounded growth gives us about 7% a year, 7.68. Lovely. What happens if over those 20 years, you've got the jitters and you thought, I'm not sure about this 9-11 uh, Twin Towers coming down or this Russian oil crisis or this Greek debt crisis or this housing crisis. I'm going to come out and I'm just going to wait it out and I'll go back in when things look better. The trouble is markets are not rational. <laughs> They don't behave in a rational way. And so what happens is, is when they decide to go up, they just go up. And by the time they've gone up, you're trying to get in behind. If you'd missed just 10 good days out of 20 years, your annualized return falls to just 4% per year. It's a whopping difference. Just 10 days out of 20 years, a 4% return. But what if you had missed 20 days? That's over 20 years, mind. Day a year, you've missed that best day. Well, now you've only got 1.57% a year. Not really that exciting or worth doing. But wait, if you've missed 30 of the best days, you've gone in too late effectively, then you've come in at minus 0.51% a year. And if you've missed 40 of the best days, you get minus 2.42, which is really staggering. So when we're sort of saying, hang on in there, it's because of these sort of stats. So when sometimes clients say, well, can't you just go out into cash for a bit? No, even when the market's looking awful, no, because we'll miss that getting back in again. So 
I wanted to ask myself, was it really worth it? Because we've had a bit of a flat year. I know we've got lots of happy clients because we haven't lost money, we've made money, that's fine. But is it really worth doing? And I went back to Financial Express and looked at our five main model portfolios. And again, this is me perhaps, you know, boasting, but we're very, very pleased with the way that things have gone. And you can see one, two, three, four, and five stacking up at returns of about 82, 107, 134, 196, and 181. Why did the level five not do quite as well as the level four? These stats were taken on the 5th of June when I was doing the initial research on this. And actually at that stage, emerging markets and Far East was a little bit down. The level five's got more of that. But nonetheless, a combined average of about 140% returns, you can do the maths and divide that by 10 years, you can see it's definitely, definitely been worth investing over the past. So that's encouraging. Now, another question we often get asked is there is a sort of a, I think it's almost drummed into us, that investing ethically will cost you. And when you invest into funds that try and avoid tobacco, um, you know, kind of arms, uh, coal, oil, you're avoiding defensive stocks and you're narrowing down your investment universe. And the big question is, can I still invest ethically and make money? And we have found that you can. Now, this is only the past five years. This may not happen again in the next five because we have had a real trend of moving away from fossil fuels towards renewables. So I'm not preaching a green message. I've got my clients now. We've got 42 million of assets under management, 20 million of that now is in ethical funds, but 22 is in mainstream funds. So we're very much split down the middle on this. But look, we managed to see that the ethical level two managed to outperform the mainstream level two by about four and a half percent over five years. The level three ethical did ever so well, 46.07% over five years against the mainstream level three, only 36, which is fascinating because this one's got everything in it. And that one's restricted but it's up by 9.46 more over five years. Now it doesn't quite do it on the four, and in fact we did this comparison last year, same story. The ethical level four, wonderful, 50% over five years, thank you very much, I'll take that, but the level four mainstream did 53.82. It's done better, why? Well, ethical portfolios struggle to get real exposure to the Far East and the emerging markets because of human rights issues and the way that you know, some of those funds have to operate. So ultimately, a really interesting story, certainly not a guide to the future, but very encouraging for those who've taken the, the jump towards green. Um, and yeah, I think it's something that's here to stay. I think long term it'll be a way that portfolios will go, but I believe it's gonna be much more of a kind of a, an evolution, not a revolution. That's me personally. The last thing I want to tell you about before we finish today and go and get some lunch is, uh, and obviously grab some questions from you, is uh, about the myth that you can't beat the big boys. So we were showing you earlier some of the awards we won last year. We don't give up. The reason I put myself through this is because when you're a small firm, it's very easy not to be accountable. I'm accountable to you, of course, but why don't I throw myself open and let somebody else pull our processes apart? It might be interesting. We might actually get better if we do that. And that's why we've always done this. So last Tuesday, I was up sweating away in a conference room with five judges judging Thomas & Thomas in the last three in the whole of the UK to see if we're the best advisor practice in the UK. This is an award that we won last year and we've been finalists on several occasions. Now we might not win, but I wanted to show them just because we're up against the big boys, it doesn't mean we're not better and we believe we are. So we went straight for the jugular. We went for performance because big firms will tell you, well, we've got lots and lots of researchers and all these people. Actually, the stats were interesting. So we were able to take the average of the multi-manager sector, which is the kind of the big boys, you know, very credible uh, average performance over one, three and five years, and then compare it against our Thomas & Thomas cautious pro-ethical uh, portfolio, which is our level two. We call it cautious for the judges. And you can see here the performance over one, three and five years. I mean, over five years, the average of the big guys was 26%. Our average on this was 41. These were done right at the beginning of July, these figures. So we comfortably beat it on a comparison on exactly the same days. Again, those figures taken from an independent source as well. But what about our level three? Perhaps that was just fluke. Well, our level three, 
we've called it our balanced year. Again, it's just our ethical, by the way, it's not our mainstream. You can see it over the one year, we don't quite beat the average. So there you are, you can't be awesome all the time. Sometimes you can't be, but we've nearly got there. 2.99 against 3.11. Good over three years, and then very, very good over five years. Again, our long-term approach seems to be paying off here. What about the level four? Well, we actually pitched our ethical, which we've already said doesn't do quite as well as our mainstream, against the mainstream average and we beat it comfortably over one, three, and five years. So it's nice to share. I know this is us kind of blowing our trumpet, and it's certainly not us saying, oh, we'll always do this. But I think what it does show our clients is we're passionate about being the best, and we will try our best every time. So that actually brings me to the end of our portfolio uh, discussion, and indeed, the end of our masterclass this morning before we...